Hello Chemistry fans. So this video is going to be a simple reaction where I'll be making some calcium hydroxide. Now, as you probably know, that's simply hydrated lime, and you can buy it at most garden stores. But the purity may be of dubious quality, and I wanted something a little more clean, so I'll be making it myself. And uh, I'll be using this in some upcoming experiments I'm going to do, which will be making some nitric acid without distillation. So if that interests you, um, please watch this video and watch a couple of upcoming videos on how I do that. So let's get started. Okay, so here's the setup. And uh, here, this explains what I'm going to do. Uh, the ingredients are 22 and a half grams of calcium chloride and 18 grams of sodium hydroxide. Now the calcium chloride that I'm going to be using is anhydrous and if your calcium chloride is not anhydrous you'll have to uh, take into consideration how much water is included and adjust the amount accordingly. Now originally I believe this came from uh, this product called Damprid um, which I, uh, you would think it would already be anhydrous but uh, I don't think that's the case. It's, it has some water in it, so I dissolved it in water and then evap and uh, filtered out because it didn't look like it was very uh, pure. It had some solids in it, so I filtered that, then dehydrated it and put it in an airtight jar. So here I have 22 and a half grams of calcium chloride. Now here I have 18 grams of sodium hydroxide. And it's an excess of 10% to allow for uh, the likely amount of water that may be included. Now, the amounts are, aren't critical, so if they don't balance exactly, the reaction should still be fine. Because the only thing that will precipitate is the desired product, uh, calcium hydroxide. I should be getting about 15 grams if this goes according to plan. And here's the balanced equation down here. So, in the beakers here I have uh, two beakers with 200 milliliters of water in each one. So I'll just dump in the, uh, first I'll turn on the stirring, then I'll dump in the sodium hydroxide. that dissolved. And in the other beaker, I'll add the calcium chloride. And I'll stir that around. And I'll be back in a minute after everything's dissolved. So both chemicals are now dissolved. The sodium hydroxide looks uh, nice and clear. But the calcium chloride uh, has a little color to it, so I'm going to try and uh, run it through the filter and see if that helps. So I would say it definitely helped. It's not perfectly clear, but it's much better. All right, so I've got the calcium chloride solution up here on the uh, hot plate. So I'll throw in a stir bar. Turn that on. I'm gonna slowly add the sodium hydroxide I've never tried this before, so I don't know exactly how it's going to go. So we'll both see it together. Interesting. Precipitate, then it redissolved. So 
probably a pH effect as soon as it becomes uh, alkaline enough the precipitate will drop out I hope So I'll grab a pH paper and, and get a reading on that. Definitely alkaline. So I will let it stir for a little while just to make sure it's complete. Then I'll give it a filter and uh, a washing or two and uh, evaluate the results. Okay, so I think it's ready to filter. So here I'm just using an ordinary coffee, coffee filter with a little bit of a vacuum as a boost to help speed it up. Oh, that's not working well. Looks like the filter's not even there. Okay, so for try number two, I'm going to use a lab grade filter paper, this grade three paper here. I'll pre moisten it so it will stick nicely to the bottom of my filter cup. our fingers. Hopefully not too much goes through except the liquid. Uh, another failure. Well, I need another plan. Alright, so this is plan C. So after sitting in the beaker for about three hours, it settled down that far. Uh, decantation probably even going to be a problem so I'm going to try and use this syringe to withdraw the upper part of this uh, this solution Okay, so I think the solution is uh, diluted with lots of water. Otherwise, this process is going to take way too long. There goes the stir bar. So it's about three hours later, and that has settled down quite nicely. So I will try and decant off as much as I can. Okay, so I think I'll wash it one more time just to get uh, as much salt out as possible. It should be pretty good after this. I'll probably just let this set overnight since it's getting late.
So after sitting overnight, it looks like it's settled out nicely. So I have observed that uh, as more and more of the salt was removed from the solution, it became less dense. So the uh, calcium hydroxide settled more quickly. So from this, I would I would advise that when you do the original reaction, use a lot more water than I did, um, and it should make it settle uh, quicker. It makes sense because if the density of the liquid is close to the density of what you're trying to get to settle out, then it's not going to go very fast. So I'll decant this off and then uh, start to dry it. So I'd like to say a few things about uh, drying the calcium hydroxide. I don't recommend using the beaker like I did in boiling it. Um, as it starts to get drier and thicken, it starts to splash and splatter a lot. Fortunately, the height of the beaker contained most of it, but it was still problematic. And then when it got down near the end, uh, little pieces started uh, flying around like popcorn. So I would recommend doing this in a shallow dish at, under a gentle heat and don't boil it. And I had quite a time getting it off of the side of the beaker. Um, there's going to be some loss from that. So I would recommend uh, not doing it this way. So theoretically, I should have produced about 15 grams of calcium hydroxide, but I know I've had quite a bit of loss, some of it from the um, futile attempts to filter it out, and then some losses um, during the drying and the decantation. So we'll see how much I have. Hopefully I have... Uh, Okay, that's about 10 grams. That's that's more than enough. I was hoping to have at least seven and a half. So that's that's just fine. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be using this in another experiment where uh, I will um, be making uh, some nitric acid without distillation, and this is going to be part of that process. So stay tuned.